All right, guys, welcome back to part two of um, this tutorial on how to create an alley scene. All right, last time we left off um, with this scene here with our trash can and our plywood and the basic lighting setup. So we're going to get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is um, set up the camera a little bit better and adjust the lighting. All right, so first of all, turn on the camera layer we have here. And I'm going to go ahead and right away hit shift a and add a lamp and an area lamp all right just have to turn my screen casting on there um okay drag the lamp up rotate it on the x-axis hitting r of an x until it's about level hit three in the numpad go inside view drag it over until it's about a little bit outside our area here all right, so go into the lamp panel, um, turn the energy, actually the distance down to about eight and energy to 0.8. All right, enable ray shadow and constant QMC. Samples will put up to four to make it less uh, noisy. So there's less um, shadow noise and obviously rectangle shape because our scene is rectangular. And I'm going to change the X size to actually make sure we have it about yeah the X size to about 14 evidently and seven this way all right so here I'm going to put it uh, let's see let's put it seven by four changes to eight um, you want to keep these ratios um, the 7 to 4, 14 and 8, about the same. So it's 7 to 4 ratio. Um, otherwise, I don't know, uh, I don't think it works quite right. So, all right, I'm just going to rotate it down a little bit over here and change the color of it to slightly blue. And I'm going to go ahead and give that a render. All right, the first thing I see is that it's really noisy, and I think that's um, probably due to our sun lamp not having enough samples. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, and well, let's turn the samples up to six instead. And I'm going to go ahead and actually position this uh, position this board. So three in the side view, Z to go into wireframe. And I'm just going to rotate it a little bit on the x-axis until it leans and move it so that it's touching the floor as well as touching the wall, obviously. That's pretty good. Now I'll see the shadows work a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and hit F12, give it another render. And right away you can see it's uh, looking pretty good. Although I would like the shadows to be a little bit more angled. Um, so to fix that, I'm going to just rotate the sun lamp a little bit. Rotate R, Z. Uh, yeah, so and that should be pretty good. Give it another render and see what it looks like. As you can see, we have that sort of nice blue color, which is coming both from our environment lighting and from our area lamp that uh, simulates an outdoor scene. Let's see. I don't know. This lamp, maybe just a little bit more golden. All right. So I'm going to go right into uh, texturing this plane, our board here. So as I recall, we did get our UV coordinates done. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. We did get it unwrapped. But now what I'm going to do is uh, save a new image. I was trying to remember if I already exported this before. Um, what happened was I recorded all the rest of the tutorial and uh, while my video software, video program uh, was compressing the video, it crashed and I lost the whole two hours that I'd done. So I can't remember if I actually already did this or not in the previous part. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again just to make sure. So hit new and I'm going to say uh, 2000. X and 3000 Y, which should give you pretty good, about the right ratio. There we go. 
as you can see here, it's pretty close to the ratio of this board right here. Um, I'm going to go now go to UV, export UV layout, and I'm going to make sure it's um, a scalable vector graphic, SVG. And let's see if I can find another one I saved. Here we go. I'm going to export it as graph toot one, just something that you remember. Export that layout. All right. So now um, we're going to go off and head into the GIMP. All right. So I've got the GIMP open here now. And I'm going to go ahead and open um, a wood texture that I want to put onto my plywood. So I'm going to go ahead and open and navigate to my folder. Should be called plywood or something. Plywood, yeah. This is the one. I'm going to hit just open up my image. Um, I'll have links below for the image as, um, so you can download them. Uh, links in the description below. Now I'm going to file uh, open as layers. My SVG that I just exported from Blender. If I can find it. Can't remember what I called it. All right, here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I'll leave everything as is. Uh, resolution 90 DPI is pretty good. So I'm going to open it. And right away, you can see that this is placed uh, this as a layer, because we want to open as layers, on top of our uh, plywood texture. So um, if you want to move the layers, you can either drag them. Why well, doesn't work? I don't know why. But hit this green arrow um, to shuffle the layers. And in this case, you want the SVG on top. So it acts as a reference so we can paint underneath it. So it's really as simple as that. Um, you know, most people do um, a lot of image manipulation with Blender um, in Photoshop instead. But um, the game is pretty simple. It's pretty similar. And that's really all you got to do. Just import as layers and shuffle them. And what you can also do is, um, if it's actually a solid image, you can adjust the opacity simply by clicking on the layer and moving the slider. And you can just simply adjust how much of the... Uh, above layer that you can see. Now if I want to paint onto this background, uh, just make sure you click on the background and then just start painting. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice little uh, design, like somebody spray painted or something. So click on this little uh, brush here and I'm going to open up the largest fuzzy brush and put the size all the way up to 10 because this is a pretty big image. And I'm going to click Make sure that our background is selected by clicking on it, left clicking. And I'm just going to go ahead and start painting something on it. So just something real, I don't know, nice and messy or whatever. Select another color. Go ahead and paint on top of that. Somebody just carelessly spray painted on top of the board. I'm going to go ahead and select black and a little bit smaller fuzzy brush that's a little bit too big we'll put it down to eight size it's still kind of big let's try that well that'll work all right now i'm just going to write on here this is where a um, tablet would come in handy but i'm just using a mouse right now because I don't have a tablet for Windows 7. Uh. Ugh. All right, so now if we click this little eye icon, we can hide the SVG, and we can see that we pretty much just uh, made this texture that will go fit in this grid, it'll fit on our board. And that's really all there is to this part. So now make sure um, this is hidden by making sure the eye icon is off and you can't see it. I'm going to hit File, Save As. And I'm going to go ahead and save it as um, a PNG so there's no loss. And I'm just going to call it Plywood New 2 Spray Painted Pute. I'm going to hit save it, and it's going to say you can't use, uh, it has to be exported before you do it because it has um, layers. So just put merge visible layers, it's alright. 
um, and you want to do merge visible layers uh, because um, we have this one invisible because we, um, you know, hit it. So if you have merge visible layers, it'll just, you know, export the visible layer and you won't have the other grid or grid on top of it. So just hit export and go ahead and save it. All right, image is done saving. So let's go back into Blender. And if we go ahead and just uh, image, if we open an image, navigate to the one we just made, we can actually go here into textured view and we can see what we've done. So this is basically it, that's what it looks like. Now, of course, we actually have to put the texture on it. So next thing we do is go into object mode, select the plywood, go into materials, add a new material, turn the intensity all the way down. It's wood, so it's not gonna reflect any light or anything like that. I'm gonna just call it uh, board or something, I don't know. Texture, new texture, diffuse, because this is gonna be the color, so I just always call it the color diffuse. Excuse me, keep burping. Okay, so we've already loaded it into the uh, the image viewer, so we can just select it from here and go down to UV. So it uses the UV coordinates that we unmapped in the first tutorial. And the color is all good. And that'll do it. So if we go ahead and render it now, we should get something a little cooler. And there you go. So that's not looking too bad right now. Um, if you notice though, I mean, the wood looks pretty flat and it just looks like a texture is being basically just slammed right on top of this, which is, uh, that's true. That's all we've done. So we're gonna add some character and a little more realism to this board by using two things, a displacement modifier and a normal map to really make it look cool. All right, so the next thing we need to do um, is, let's see, bump our subdivision surface up to four, make sure the render is also at four, or something pretty high. Um, as you can see, there's a lot, there's a ton of vertices now. And now we need to actually go back into the GIMP and just go out, close this, file, open. And we're gonna go ahead and open up our plywood texture again. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is make a texture that will be used for our displacement map. 